In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the process of electro etching and electro deburring and electro polishing. The purpose of doing this is these pieces of equipment are going into an oxygen rich environment and they cannot have metal burrs on them. So, if you see here, we have electro etched away all the little burrs that were present from the plasma table. This one here has had no post work. See those little burrs right there? Unacceptable in an oxygen rich environment. So we're going to go ahead and do this for the customer for free, but I just wanted to show you guys how I did it. Hey, what's up, fellas? I haven't done an electrical video in a long time, anything about chemistry either. It's been all burners lately. So I've got something pretty cool here that I just threw together. I was doing some stainless steel electro polishing and Turns out I needed a little bit more amperage than the standard power supply could handle. This one of these dudes right here. They've got really nice transformers in them. Look at that coil on that thing. Essentially, we've got a little test rig here that I hooked up to determine uh, whether or not everything's working okay before I hook this up to the electrolysis or electro polishing process. This is a little module here that gives us a temperature reading on that thermal couple right there. Let's get a look at this dude. This is the diode basically. The transformer is connected to this diode which converts it into DC power. And this right here is just a shunt current sensor with a thermal couple hooked up to it also. That's what this little modular unit here is. It reads the voltage and amps. I'm gonna crank this thing up. 15 amps. Wonder why some of it's glowing, but some of it ain't. So we're at 25 volts, 13 amps. I think this thing is gonna make a fine electro polishing power supply. So any of you guys who are doing the electro polishing, I've noticed some of you have talked about your struggles with your power supply. I think this is gonna be a really good solution for you. Not a very cheap one, I might add. This is a lot of kit right here. But I just ran out and grabbed another $56 in lead weights. We we're making a lead lined pot. I tinned the bottom with acid core solder and we're then gonna dump some lead in there. It looks really bad right now. But don't worry, we're, this is a work in progress here. I'm trying to do the auto body style thing here. So guys, we can't use a stainless steel pot for the cathode. The cathode has to be either graphite or lead, something that doesn't react with the acid. So we're doing the old lead box trick here, and this should work out perfect for what we're doing. This is our lead cathode bucket, and it weighs about 3,000 pounds, so this ought to be perfect. All right, guys, my damn Chinese hot plate broke on me. I'm gonna do uh, 58 amps here. We'll see what 10 minutes gives us. That ought to deburr it. It's 38 amps. 50. So here it is after 10 minutes. It needs a little more time. Got a little bit of funk here and there yet. I'm gonna throw it in there for another 10. And uh, we'll go from there. It is looking nice. See those black spots so we just want to etch all them out though all right fellas in the preliminary testing it was discovered that the electrical equipment at my disposal was severely inadequate for the task at hand even this monster right here just wasn't up to the job so i headed off to the local hardware store and built the contraption we were looking at earlier all right so just one more quick look at what we did here kind of a before and after you can see the pieces they're just there's no post work really here this is just 
fresh off the bender and this is what we got after the process definitely cleans these things up great for painting and any ceramic coating work that you might need to do it just looks better all the way around I mean that's looks like crap right there I think I'd definitely buy the one on the right instead of this one but that's what we got so there it is guys that's uh, one of the reasons why I built this contraption and I spent the time making that this was not easy this took me like probably all day because I had to go get lead twice I ran out of lead twice and was doing some other stuff but definitely glad I did it that thing weighs 50 pounds I bet I also am going to be doing a lot of refractory coating work so that's why I put so much effort into this so I have some actual electro polishing chemicals on the way they're just not here yet but nonetheless I don't want to polish this I wanted to get this satin like um, etch effect the electrolyte solution that I use had this 93% sulfuric acid uh, drain opener and this is um, phosphoric acid water softener cleaner. This is 30% and uh, use one part glycerol. So I use three of these containers to one of these containers. And if you're ever in the store and you want to know what the chemical concentration of the stuff you're looking at is, just type in the name and then MSDS after that. And it'll pull up the material safety, safety data sheet and on there it will tell you the exact compositions and everything. Of Add a little bit of glycerol because this stuff has to be viscous for it to work properly. This is not an electro polishing um, solution, though it can electro polish at very high energy densities. This is about 30 amps per decimeter. That's a little high there, or centimeter, not decimeter. Got him. All right, so what I want to do is etch this burner, okay? And I'm going to coat this thing with a spray coating, three mils of a high-temperature ceramic coating that I'm going to make from some information I got from some old Los Alamos laboratory literature that I found. Check this out, guys. I've been known to dig deep down into the PDF files when I'm really looking for some cool stuff. Um, I actually sought this information out after watching a video okay and this old video i was wondering i wonder what ceramic wash these guys used to um to do this and they show another section here if it'll come to it this crucible has been filled with ceramic wash they're talking about and i thought man i wish i knew what they were using and i wish i could find it so after a little bit of research and digging deep down into the PDFs on the internet, I pretty much uh, came up with some of this stuff here. There's two of them. I got this one here. This might be. This is some other um, crucible handbook from the United States Atomic Energy Commission. And wow, do they got some awesome recipes up in here. So anyway, let's get back to the point here. Inside these PDFs. They talk about using um, yttrium oxide coatings, okay? And I also found another little gem. This stuff right here that I made, this is potassium silicate. It's better than sodium silicate, according to the nuclear physicist. They're saying that this stuff reacts better at high temperatures as um, a binder. So stop making sodium silicate, guys. The potassium silicate is where it's at. It becomes soft at higher temperatures, and it keeps the um, the coatings from cracking. I'm doing some experimenting here, trying to develop a crucible wash, but that's not the point. We're going to be making some sprays with this uh, potassium silicate, and I've got uh, two different spray guns here, and I've also got this rig right here, this pressurized spray gun setup, just in case this uh, material is too thick for your regular situation so i'm going to be working with a lot of refractory coatings and high temperature coatings here for a while and that's just some of the stuff that i'm doing you got to have a, a really good surface for that stuff to hold well in some cases not in every case but for these burners um i just want to give this a try 
and see if a spray-on paint will uh, something a little bit better than the store-bought stuff, you know? The Los Alamos nuclear laboratory grade stuff, man.